Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for high-level traders to learn valuable trends and strategies, connect with other top traders, and become consistently profitable. Click the link in the description of this video to receive a special offer on our revolutionary PS60 training, access to our daily chat room filled with experienced traders, and so much more. Space is limited, so make sure you don't miss out. We look forward to seeing you in the room. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to the first uh, weekend update show of uh, the AccessToTrader.com. Well, weekend update show. Everybody is having uh, a super start to their uh, 2019. Uh, again, for those of you guys who have, I, th I think, I, I, I don't believe I recorded a video last weekend when I was skiing uh, for, well, something to ski. Uh, for uh, New Year's Eve, but uh, for all you guys who are joining us uh, the first time, uh, obviously in 2019, uh, I want to wish everybody a very happy and healthy uh, New Year. Um, I pray and hope uh, that you can have and you can achieve everything uh, that you want uh, for 2019 on personal levels, relationship levels, uh, obviously the financial um, reasons why uh, we wake up in the morning and try to click the mouse uh, effectively as well. So God bless. Hope everybody has a safe, happy, uh, most important, healthy, right? Most important, healthy, because at the end of the day, without health, well, there's nothing else to talk about. So uh, hopefully everybody has an awesome, awesome uh, year. So uh, just uh, right before we're about to um, get into this really quick, uh, really quickly, um, I, I don't market uh, what we do, okay, um, I trade pivots, everybody knows um, I trade pivots, um, and although you can trade pivots for anything, you know, any asset class, uh, futures, uh, Bitcoin, um, anything, anything you want, um, I decide personally, I trade high beta, uh, the Amazons of the world, the Teslas, so forth and so on. So um, although this is an online business, just like everything else, I, I, I try to not uh, you know, I try to not sway into um, the new trader. Okay, I like to always give guidance to the new trader. We do have new traders in our live webinar, but I always, you know, always lead with reality instead of fantasy. No, if you have a two thousand dollar account, can you trade with me? No, you can't. It's just reality. Um, it's just reality. We trade Amazon. You can't trade uh, one share of Amazon. But um, what I do uh, always try to instill into the new trader um, is. A lot of ways that you can make money that has nothing to do with what social media has really pounded down your throats, and you've heard that you heard me saying this for you know for a very very long time. There's a whole world out there. Okay, um, you don't need to trade pivots. Okay, if that doesn't fit your uh, financial um, situation, if that doesn't fit your uh, lifestyle, uh, your pain tolerance, your account size. Uh, again, not everything is right for everybody okay and i've always maintained that no process is perfect uh i don't care if they were giving away money on the corner somebody would screw it up right somebody would literally screw it up uh by not taking it um so i think there's a whole world out there for everybody and i think if you are a new trader um i think your job is to literally find out what fits your shoe size okay you know your size nines might not fit into my size 11s and vice versa. So it's very, very important before uh, you cement your standing into trading, you have to figure out, you know, what's the best for your account size, life size, uh, lifestyle, risk tolerance, um, risk levels, just overall uh, daily, uh, you know, daily areas of interest that you can feel comfortable every single day waking up uh, and clicking a mouse is very, very important. That's why I think the whole uh, alert service chat room thing for years and years and years has been flawed, right? It's been absolutely for, uh, flawed because again, how can you expect to maintain the same trade and execute the same trade and control the same trade and maximize the same trade if your account size is completely different than the person uh, who is quote unquote alerting you? And again, really it's 2019. Are we still talking about alerts? Do you really need somebody to tell you when to buy stock? Seriously. Uh, it's all about technical analysis. Um, so kind of to wrap this up before we get into um, what we do, we, we do every single weekend. Um, what I do again, I, again, I don't encourage anybody to take on in anything that I do. Um, if you want to trade with me, you can. Okay, I trade pivots. I trade Tesla, Netflix, uh, Amazon, Squares, uh, Google's, you know, all that good stuff. Nvidia. Uh, but the one thing I will tell you is that pivots do work. You know, pivots do work incredibly well. Uh, you know, you guys see this. 
uh, now for years and years and years. Um, and the most important part is to understand the concepts. And again, you can trade them with uh, any asset class, mid cap, large cap, even small caps if they expand in range. So if you do have, for example, uh, if you do have, for example, a stock that has some news and has a huge, huge spread, there's going to be ranges in that spread, so you can take advantage of that. But uh, what I try to do is, uh, you know, push the new trade in the right direction, and it's your job to figure out. Uh, if our process is uh, right for you. Again, I would never market guerrilla market to it to you guys because, again, I don't believe somebody with a thousand dollar account should be trading. If you're going to be trading Amazon, it should, it should be trading, it should be really, really learning. Um, so, what we did, you know, what we did uh, to kind of point you guys in the right direction, uh, what we did in the start of the year, because uh, I know a lot of new traders have been emailing me throughout the year and they're like, well, listen, I, you know, I have a two thousand dollar account. Um, I just can't, you know, I can't afford $300, I can't afford $1,000, I can't afford $2,000, but I want to learn your process. So what we did uh, in the beginning of the year, and this is incredibly for, probably for two weeks, I haven't decided how long we want to do this. Uh, what we did was um, we raised our, what we talked about last, uh, last week, we raised our private Twitter feed with only the pivots, but we added an incredible amount of value to that uh, feed. Okay, so $40 a month now, you're getting... Uh, the live pivot feed uh, every single day. So if you're trading, uh, you know, all these beta, beta names, this is, this is a really, really great value. But you're also now getting uh, the option flow report at nighttime, uh, the daily watch, uh, pivot watch for the next day, okay? And we added an incredible bonus. And this is going to be only for a limited time only. So if you're a new trader, it's only 40 bucks. I think anybody could afford this. Uh, if you want to learn uh, pivots, this is what we added, guys, okay? This is what we added, uh, the, the, you know, the four-hour uh, workshop. Okay, so if you are uh, interested in pivots and want to you know, at least get an introduction uh, into pivots, uh, this is included in the live feed. Okay, uh, and, and again, you don't need to take advantage of the live feed to take advantage uh, of this just by itself. This could open up a really a uh, new world for you, and more important, um, you can look at the market uh, from a different point of view. So, the, you know, the PS60 workshop is included now for a very, very limited time. Uh, so, if you want to take advantage, it's only forty bucks. Uh, and again, this could really, really, uh, you know, create an inc incredible amount of value uh, for your uh, long-term uh, bias, your long-term outlook. Just to look at the market from a completely different view from where social media has brought to you, so guys. So hopefully you guys have uh, enjoyed this and uh, take advantage of this. So uh, let's get to the tape, right? Crazy, crazy uh, 2018. Uh, for all you guys who have been following this from various platforms, uh, again, I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear. Uh, I'm an opportunist. I trade both sides of the market. Uh, I don't care uh, if Amazon is at $3,000 a share, $1,200 a share, or anywhere in between. Uh, my job is to identify channels within those ranges and take advantage of them both long and short via uh, cash flow process trading from supply to supply and demand to demand. And we had an incredible amount of range uh, for 2018. And, you know, 2019 started absolutely crazy. So if you look, if you look, these are the last two days of uh, 2018, right? And again, if you've been following me on a day-to-day -day basis, you kind of know, again, we had this kind of measured move potential to this 157 area on the queues. And the way the year started out was, you know, just really tested the limits of the bull. And again, if you've been watching me now for a while, you know my thoughts. This is, this is a bear market rally until we reclaim all the supply here. So there's nothing, you know, there, there's no bullish market action here. This is a dead cat, uh, bear market rally until, right, we start reclaiming levels, 50-day moving average, the 100-day moving average, and close above 177, okay? So this is, this is all what it is until it actually becomes, quote-unquote, uh, a bullish uh, type of scenario. Again, I, you can say I'm wrong, you can say I'm right, it doesn't make a difference. You know, I, my process is completely going to be uh, different in mindset than the majority of people telling me it's a bull market, it's a bear market. It doesn't matter what you call it, the price action dictates what you're going to do. So if you look at how we close, you know, we were, we were having a really nice little build and we had a measured potential move to this 157 area. And then this happened, right? The first day happened, uh, first day of the year was on a Wednesday, right? We gapped down 400 points and the bulls had a very, very, um, very easy out to kind of tap out and just, you know, just die in, into the night and really rolled over back to the lows of the day, but they didn't, okay? And it was incredibly important that they didn't, uh, at least for the bull center, at least for the bull measured potential, 
And the, the Dow rallied. I mean, the Dow rallied, huge turnaround, uh, intraday, and everything was great, right? Everything was great. Uh, and then the next day, right, next day, you had Apple more, okay? And the question now was, well, can the bulls do it again? And one, you know, one, it's like, it's like, and I said this in one of the, uh, one of the videos um, that went out this week, um, I turned around and said, it's like, it's like Leonardo da Vinci creating a masterpiece. And the next day they said, hey, this is beautiful, right? This is amazing. The best thing I've ever seen. And by the way, do it again, right? Do it again the next day. And that's what the bulls were faced with. Uh, Apple uh, pre-announced, okay, uh, pre-announced, and they took literally the tech sector with it. And we were down 300 and change, right? 300 and change at the open. And now the question was, well, can the bulls repeat what they did the previous day, okay? Or... Uh, you know, trap the shorts, early shorts, and and go back to green. And it was different, okay? It was completely different. There was a real catalyst behind it. Uh, there was negative stigma. You had the whole China thing, exposure to China, and everything in between. And it was one of the ugliest, uh, one of the ugliest days for uh, tech. Um, and it was actually a really good trading session. If you guys remember on Thursday, it was a phenomenal trading session. Uh, once the ranges were going down, we, we were, you know, we, we were just, I was tweeting pivot after pivot after pivot. I mean, Amazon, NVIDIA, Netflix, Tesla, I mean, one by one, they're just getting absolutely destroyed. It was, it was a premium day. I mean, Thursday session was a premium day, but the, the, the best part of it was, and this is kind of where we, we talk about trading is the, the greatest reality show, not on television. Uh, the greatest part about it is we took out and we closed below the five-day moving average, okay? We closed below, below the five-day moving average. The Dow was down like 600 and change. The NASA got absolutely murdered. This was a 25-star short overnight 15 years ago, right? 15 years ago, this was a 25-star short overnight. The only thing I kept on saying in the live webinar was – the only reason I didn't want to go short on Thursday night into Friday session was because we gapped down three days in a row, excuse me, two days in a row of over 300 points. And we don't want to kind of push the limits. So the fact that we closed below the five-day moving average was super, super bearish. Again, 10 years ago, this was a 10-star short overnight, okay? But again, the market has evolved and we evolved with, you know, with the market. And the five-day, again, for all you guys who are joining us for the first time today, uh, the five day for me, a lot of people don't use the five day, but the five day moving average for me is short term sentiment. Okay. It doesn't matter what's going to happen five years from now, five months from now, five weeks from now. It's short term sentiment. And the fact that the bulls confirmed and closed below the five day moving average, it was just a matter of how will we go lower? Will we go lower? If we could we gap down and have an opening range low breakdown for more selling, right? With the measured potential move to 144. Or are we going to gap into supply, right? Gap into supply on the five-day moving average where we lost the previous day. Oh, by the way, and then go green to red and then fail and measure move to 144. And our, you know, the night before, if you see my tweets, and I said there and I said, well, listen, if the market gods are listening, if you guys can gap up the market tomorrow, it would be, would be absolutely great. Hey, you got to ask and you got to get. So Friday session, just to compare what Friday session was like. Imagine, imagine you are in Japan in the 1980s, okay, in the 1980s, and the invincible Mike Tyson, okay, mighty Mike Tyson, Iron Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson, killer of all killers, right, is fighting a guy by the name of James Buster Douglas, who basically just got off the got off the bus and gave him a pair of gloves. The chances of James Buster Douglas knocking out Mike Tyson, even, even landing a punch on Mike Tyson, uh, was like catching lightning in a bottle. And the most amazing part about Friday's session was James Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson, part two. If you would have told me, okay, if you would have told me that we, and this is the finished product, but if you would have told me that in 24 hours, we were going to break and have technical damage on the five-day moving average with a su 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 significant catalyst of Apple's deficiencies and at least the headline in earnings, okay? And the next day, not only are we going to reclaim the five-day moving average, but we were going to test the next supply zone, I would have thought you were completely out of your mind. 
And, and, I, and I said this in the live webinar, and I said, anybody who is buying this open, at least the open, okay, anybody who's buying at least the open into supply, you are going to lose 99.9999999% of the time. And guess what, right? This is why, again, this is the greatest reality show that's not on television. So the day on Friday started out, okay, it started out exactly what we wanted to. Uh, again, there weren't any pivots. How can you possibly have a pivot on the long side if stocks are trading right into supply? Exactly what you wanted, exactly what you hoped for. So we started shorting stocks into supply, okay? We had initial shorts on Square, but here's kind of where, where, where things got kind of not bad. I, mean, I, I think we traded Friday's morning as well as you could have possibly traded. If you're, if you're in the live webinar, everything that hits supply faded. The problem was the, the fades weren't big. And not only the fades weren't big, they were short, short lived. And the one thing, again, if you look at all these things we talked about and collected all the data that I just talked about, technical damage, traded into supply, right? Traded into supply, lost the five day moving average, traded back to supply and now fading. We should have had at least one really significant back test. I'm not saying maybe go to red, but we should have had one really significant back test. So we traded what was in front of us. And, and again, not, not everything is a pivot, pivot, pivot. Again, if you watch the, the PS60 workshop, you notice you can trade selling stocks into supply and buying stocks into demand. It's part of you know it's part of the whole process, part of the whole game. So we started doing that. Okay, uh, shorted square right right to supply came in thirty cents or so, forty cents ago. Okay, no big deal. Came back, stopped out, break even on the balance. Okay, take some cash flow along the way. Nvidia right. I know a lot of you guys caught this trade. Nvidia traded right to supply, came in like a dollar and change very very quickly, came right back up. Go explode it again. Google. Um, you know, I, I, it, the funny thing is, I even tweeted Google real time, uh, real time on Twitter, and I say, hey "Guys, I'm shorting. I'm shorting Google." I shorted Google. Goes down five, six points. I cover some. You know, again, use break even on the balance. Got stopped out even. So we kind of kept on seeing that over and over again. Again, these these moves into supply, they get rejected. You took a little bit of cash flow, and then the stock market started going up. Here was the craziest part about the market. Okay, here was the craziest part about the action that I saw. After the initial move in the first, I would say 10, 12 minutes of the market, okay, this is before the first pivot, stocks were just kind of sitting there, right? Kind of sitting there. And then they explode, which is nothing, which is absolutely nothing wrong. And usually what we do is if you get an explosion, right, you wait for that 10 o'clock candle to confirm for the next move up. The problem was, again, for from, from just the common sense point of view, not from the logic, but from the common sense point of view is when you usually get a move, right? When you usually get a move, the move prior to a really, really big expanding move, it's going to be $2, $3, maybe $5 on Amazon. Amazon, from this candle, put up a candle that went from $15.28 to $15.60, okay? Raise your hand. Who can buy the next candle on a 40 point expansion on the previous candle? I'm waiting, right? And that's exactly what we have, okay? And I'm sitting there, I go, how can I possibly, I don't wanna use the word chase, but how can I possibly, okay, go in and on a second candle of Amazon after a 45, can, 45 point expansion candle, right? It just didn't make sense. And when you look at it over and over and over again, you kept on seeing exactly the same things, right? You had an expansion candle of, of Netflix from 78 to 85. I'm saying this up. This is an $8 candle. How can you possibly, quote unquote, not Chase, but right, Chase? How can you possibly justify putting your money to work on an $8 expansion candle opening range, right? It's not like it went from the depths of hell into, you know, into a, a medium level. It was already breaking out. Okay? You had the golden update and you say, all right, the stock is up $9, $10 on the day. There has to be at least one fade and it'll be a sneaky candle on the upside, right? To get it going? Nope, not that either. You looked at Alibaba, you just kept on seeing the same thing. Alibaba puts in a candle from 133 to 137. You say, how can you buy Alibaba on a $4 expansion candle, right? It's not like it's a, it's a $300 stock or $500 stock. How can you justify buying a $130 stock on a $5 candle, right? On a $5 candle, oh, by the way, going into supply. So we kept on seeing that over and over and over again. And it was just one of those things that a lot of times, you know, I, I've always said this, I've always maintained this. If you've been listening to me for, for years, 
Um, I don't care if the market's up 1,000 points, 2,000 points, down 1,000 points, whatever the case may be. Um, I trade because I, I have value, okay? I don't trade because the market is open. Um, I don't have the fear of missing out. Again, okay, after a while, and you, you'll ask this, and you, if you get a poll of anybody who traded, who's trading at least a decade, they will tell you, after a while, you just don't care, okay? Uh, it's not that meaningful to you. It's just not that important for you uh, to participate in a day that you have no value. Uh, and if you, if you still have FOMO after a decade in this business, I'm not even talking about two days. I'm, I'm literally approaching two decades um, you know, this spring. And if you're trading for 10 years and you can't, and you can't justify, okay, if you can't justify putting your money in the middle of the table, okay, um, then there's, some, there's something wrong. And I made a conscious decision on Friday um, after I, I traded like three, four things uh, into supply, took some cash flow, blah, 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 blah. And I said to myself, how can I possibly sit there? It's like three, four candles in and there's no downtick in the market. There's absolutely no downtick in the market. These stocks are just going up and up and up and up without giving you even remotely of an entry. And this happened literally for like five and a half hours of the day, like literally five and a half hours of the day. And, you know, I, we live with our choices. I, you know, I don't care what you do for a living. Uh, we, life is about choices, okay? Uh, it's not about today. It's about making conscious decision for tomorrow. And even though, you know, I did, you know, did what I had to do on Friday, but there was nothing that I put on. Every, every trade I put on was in short side. I mean, it was, was, was amazing. Into supply, made a little bit, little, little bit of cash flow, and then that's it. Okay, for, so when they started walking up the market up 800, 850 points, you just sat there. And a lot of people that I know, you know, been doing this for a very long time, just sat there and just like, well, what the hell do we do now, right? And what we started laughing was just mark the mark, you know, mark the, the, the Dow up 1,000 already and just close the day. I mean, it, the, the value tier is over. So the, the moral of the story was, if you chase this gap up, into supply, you would have lost 99.9% of the time. For the 0.00001% for the people who chased everything up on Friday, God bless, you made your money. But again, just keep this in mind, especially if you're a new trader. There's a difference between being right and being profitable. And again, anybody can be profitable. Again, it's a two-sided coin. You're either profitable or you're not, right? Uh, but just, just have the conscious effort. The technical analysis usually does work. And I, I would say Friday's session was probably one of the oddest, okay, one of the oddest uh, things I've seen from price action uh, in an incredibly long time. So, and I said this on Monday, uh, or excuse me, on Wednesday, the first day of the year, if this is an indication of what 2019 is going to be, I mean, you better wear a cup, a mouth guard, uh, full-blown body armor, right? Full-blown body armor, especially if you're a new trader. And the one thing that, that I said, um, and I, I, I always say this, I, I think the first week uh, of the market, okay, in a new year is probably the most emotionally deflating uh, time of the year, especially for a new trader. And for those of you guys who are joining us, you know, for the very first time, and, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have done this, I've, I've done this, uh, you know, New Year's Eve, you're with your buddies, blah, 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 and you're sitting there and you're like, well, I traded for a year. This is the year we're going to kill it. We're going to kill it. We're going to kill it. And then first day comes along, second day comes along. You're doing exactly the same thing, and you're mentally already destroyed for the whole year. And the one thing I've, I've always said, this guy is, I don't care if you're in a bull market, bear market, distribution market, whatever market, supermarket, right? Whatever market you're in, okay. You better know what you're doing. You better have a very valid process. You better justify putting your money in the center of the table. And the most important thing is you better have an idea of how to protect your capital. Again, lead with your uh, chin, chin uh, lead with your shield, not with your chin. So it's very, very important. So if you look at the macro view, okay, if you look at the macro view, and I, and I really think what happened on Friday, I made, I made a short video about it. Um, what I really think happened on Friday was you had people short overnight, which was the right thing to do, okay? I, I don't think anybody out there possibly could have said, you know what, I want to get long time. If you did, again, I want, I want to know the doctor who recommended the pills that you were on. But again, that's a whole different story. So I think what happened was a lot of people were short overnight, okay, number one. Uh, when they gapped them up, when they gapped up into supply, I think a lot of people added to their shorts, okay. Then you had early shorts, fresh shorts, and they did not obey their covers. They did not obey, obey their max pain. And I think what they kept on doing was just literally just shorting more and more and more and more because everybody was expecting 
a back test that first day, right? That first day, at least give me a first candle, give me a downtick in the market just to even re-enter it into the long side, which never happened. And that was the most incredible part of Friday's session. Um, I don't remember, I really don't remember a day like this in a very, very long time. But uh, if you look at the scoreboard for the week, uh, I don't think it did it justice. The NASDAQ rose a little bit over 2%. Uh, the Dow only one and a half percent. If you think about how crazy it was with a 750 point move uh, on Friday, but if this is uh, if this is um, what we're looking for for 2019, uh, especially if you're new traders, you better know what the hell you're doing, or else you know you're, you're going to be a statistic like everything else. So uh, let's look at the macro uh, macro levels uh, again. Until we get above here. This is all a bear market rally. Again, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care what, what you want to call it. Uh, I buy stocks in a bear market. I short stocks in a bear market. It's, it's part of the game. It's where the value is. So here's going to be our line in the sand for, uh, you know, here's our line in the sand for, uh, for this week, right? 157. Uh, 157 is the high from Friday, and it stopped perfectly into supply. Again, stocks do trade, whether it's on a 60-minute channel or a daily channel, uh, into supply, and it's going to stop 99% of the time. That's why uh, the market got rejected up here. It didn't stop randomly. It got rejected because it hit uh, supply. So if the bulls uh, want to take this market higher, okay, and if you look at the 60-minute channels, it surely does appear so. Okay, We are going to need to reclaim and build this 157 level. I, I think for the bulls, they really need an inside day. Okay, going into uh, tomorrow. Okay, they really do. They need an inside day. They need a day of rest. They need a day to prove that the sellers are comfortable with Friday's rally. Okay, it's very, very important. We can't have a day that the market gaps up, uh, you know, 100 points and then goes down 500 again. It just, again, you, you don't want more disruption. You don't want more volatility. Volatility is a byproduct of uncertainty. You don't have volatility in a bull market. Think about that. Think about that logically. So what you want, if you're a bull and you're hoping this was the bottom, again, nobody knows if it is, maybe, you know, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But what you need to happen is a structured inside day. What you need to happen is stocks, more stocks to catch up uh, with the indexes. And you need at some point, you know, maybe Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, if you have sideways action, forming a nice little flag, you need to reclaim the 57. And then you have a big run. Then you have a really, really big run potential on the NASDAQ 100 all the way to this 162, 163 level. And the only reason why, again, there's nothing, this is all airspace. And if you guys, you know, again, watched uh, the PS60 workshop, uh, you'll see, again, stocks trade from supply to supply to supply to supply to supply. Again, there's nothing random. It's just how they get there. So uh, going into uh, going into tomorrow's session, uh, you know, I'm modestly bullish until I'm, you know, until I reason not to. Again, okay? again, you have to give the the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of ideas uh, that I do like. Um, I know it sounds nuts, but you know, let's start out with Facebook. You know, uh, Facebook coming off the bottom, you had the whole Citron. Wink. Uh, you had the whole Citron uh, back up the sleigh, right? Uh, beautiful chart. It's actually a really nice looking chart. It uh, has measured, measured potential to about 140 and a half, 141 and change. Uh, that is the 50 day supply. Uh, again, especially if we get a red open, you know, keep an eye on this thing, red to green to build above 138 for potential uh, all the way up to this 140 and a half, uh, 141 level. Uh, let me see what else I like here for, uh, let me give you guys a couple ideas. Um, I like that as well. You know, Roku looks good. Uh, Roku looks good uh, as well. You know, kind of same chart. Uh, first close over supply. If it can reclaim, you know, 134.11 or opening range high. Again, you can see the measure potential in case the market continues uh, to go higher. Keep an eye on that. Um, you know, Square. Square looks good as well. I mean, Square looks good as well. Uh, again, same chart. I mean, same chart as the NASDAQ 100, same chart as, uh, as Square, same chart as Facebook. Again, got rejected into supply, right? It didn't, didn't randomly stop trading. It, ran, it got rejected into supply. All it needs to do is reclaim the 59.70, 59.80 level. And then you can see a measure move to about $63. So, uh, you, know, I, you know, again, I'm watching Google and Facebook, obviously Netflix as well. Uh, Amazon as well. But again, I, I don't get excited. Uh, I don't care if the market goes up or down. I don't get excited. It's all about collecting data. Uh, instead of putting the cart in front of the horse, we're looking for confirmation in both ways or, or another. So guys, I want to wish everybody an unbelievable, happy uh, 2019. May God bless you and your family. Uh, for all you guys who want 
to look into the wonderful world of pivots, here's your chance. I mean, really, we, we added some phenomenal, phenomenal value uh, for an incredibly small amount of money, especially for you new traders who want to kind of have an entry point into what potential is in the pivots. Well, here's your chance. It's only going to be for a limited time. Guys, God bless everybody. Have an awesome, awesome day. And with God's help, I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care.